all of the people. Hey, gods and goddesses. That's my beloved Trisha Croft from Light of Lemuria. And this is my beloved Mihal Kali Greeks from Tantra Movement. Today we will speak about sacred sexuality as a part of a series of master classes. What we give it to you as a support for our online and in person retreats for couples. And so today we'll talk about the difference between sacred sexuality and typical normal sex. So we're going to be going into all topics of sacred sexuality and what makes it so sacred. Talking about different techniques and methods as we call in the tantric path sublimation and going into all the juicy parts and, and to helping you understand and implementing this into your sacred practice. To start, maybe some essential things. One of the most important aspects of Tantra, it's transforming typical sex, what is very often connected with guilt, shame, addictions, desires, past traumas, transforming it into so-called sacred sexuality, what is the most beautiful, most intimate, most close and also most energizing and most powerful expression of more and more unconditional love. Love mm. to yourself, love especially to your partner and love to it all. Yeah, so I guess transforming, that is the question, isn't it? How do we transform that? How do, where do we start? We're transforming the traumas or going into that area with sacred sexuality and sexuality it is such pure potent energy and life force it's our most potent energy we have in the universe when we're having normal sex we generate so much of this in our genitals and Instead of keeping it in the humanness, we, in a tantric path, and we'll be talking about this a little bit later on, but we bring this energy and transform it up into the higher chakras or our divinity, our godlike and goddess-like selves, and we transform it and that is one aspect of the sacred sexuality and being able to nourish these parts to be able to look at your humanness but also know that you also have a divineness as well and bringing wholeness into your whole totality. This process is called a sublimation, basically bringing the energy upward, nourishing all the chakras. Instead of losing this energy, like what we do in typical sex through the peak orgasm, so we will speak about how to do it. At the end of this class, we will give you practical advice on how exactly you do the technique. So stay with us till the end. We will speak about all the aspects of what this transformation give it to us, and also about all the other uh, different aspects of it. Also in our online courses, on our in-person retreats, we keep it as essential to guide you into this transformation process. Mm -hmm. That's what makes actually Tantra tantric for us and that's what makes the sacred sexuality sacred. This is very essential. We give you practical techniques about that and if you like to go deeper, we refer you to further following. When we look at sacred sexuality, let's break it down. So we have the sacred sexuality. We know that this is the most sacred ritual on the planet that we can do. Apart from having a baby, it is one of the most sacred acts and rituals that a human can do. When we're conscious and bring awareness in what we are doing, slowing down, being aware of what you're doing and being aware of your partner and who you're making love to. This makes it sacred. This makes it conscious. And it is bringing the alchemy, the magic. It's using that life vital force. It's that sexual energy. We, are, we come from sex. 
we come from this sexual, beautiful, pure essence and energy. So when we are making love, we are being conscious and aware, not only with what's going on within our bodies, our physical bodies, our emotional bodies, our mental bodies, our spiritual bodies, our astral bodies, our senses, all these things that are going on within you, but also what is going on in your partner as well. It's like two universes, two, two universes or two planets coming together and colliding. And it's, it's two energies. It's, it's, this is two sexual beings, two vital forces coming together. And this is the alchemy. It can be sacred union. If you, as a couple, are there already, you are already aligned. But this is what this is. It's sacred sexuality. It's basically bringing this sacred energy, one of the most powerful energy what uh, human beings can use. It creates life. Instead of losing it, what we usually do in typical sex is bringing it up, up to the heart that you love better, you connect it better with mm -hmm. yourself, with your partner. We nourish our chakras. So we kind of create the baby within ourselves, within our union, because we bring this energy to other chakras. We start to being able more to connect with our partners mm -hmm. on much more levels than only on the sexual body, body, mm -hmm. fuck, fuck. It's not fucking, it's love making. So because we bring it to the heart, so we love each other. And because we look into each other's eyes, we connect on the soul levels. Mm -hmm. So this makes it sacred. Mm -hmm. This makes it not just as a typical sex. So with um, love making, as Michal was saying, it is a sacred ritual. Because just like any ritual is this with love making, with the sacredness, you are creating this beautiful energy of foreplay and then building this energy up. And as this energy raises and rises within both of you and together and the love making and then the, the orgasmic peaks and everything, all this beautiful alchemy that you are creating. And then after, and through, like Michal said, the eye gazing and, and all this beautiful heart connection as well, as well as sexual connection. And then you are then bringing the energy down and then there is that aftercare. In typical sex, we miss this part. Well, there's hardly any foreplay. It's all rushed, it's all fuck, fuck, fuck. And then, then the aftercare, there's dismal. There's hardly any or the cigarette, or go to sleep, or disconnect, you know? Yeah. Where's the communication, the sacredness? You just made this beautiful um, masterpiece, energetic masterpiece. So you should be celebrating with your loved one, and, it's in, and this aftercare is making sure that these energies go back down your body and that you're grounded and look we'll go into other master classes of sex magic and things like that but you're bringing this energy down and grounding it within each other bringing that all that cosmic bubble of bliss bringing it down into the physical body again bringing it all into every cell of your body bringing it in and connecting and this is Ritual. And that's why it's very important to have a consciousness about what you're gonna do, to bring a, the commitment into sacredness, into the love, that it's not just fuck, fuck, fuck. And that's what it's all Tantra about, to transform this into sacred ritual of expressing the love, mm -hmm. not running and fulfilling your desires, but actually liberating yourself from the desires, but transforming it into the conscious choice of love making as a, a one of the most beautiful expression of love not as a fulfilling your needs there's so many people that their needs are not met sexually especially in couples there, there's so many 
And the reason is, is because there is no communication. There is no communication before the actual act of, of being completely conscious, of sharing what you actually love. What do you love in foreplay? What do you love in love making? And what is it after that you need? Is it just to be embraced and to be held? Is it to be touched and stroked? What is it? And these needs, you're going into sacred sexuality, you're going into a sacred ritual, a sacred rite. Don't you think that this is very important? Because if your needs aren't met, then you're not happy. And you're not happy in this bubble. You're not, it's sort of like you're only getting halfway. So this is really important to be able to communicate where your sacred ritual is going to go and be able to build on that and to be satisfied and to be held and to be met. Bringing it to the practicality, I'm sure some of more conscious couples, long couples, already discussed those things, but probably some of even long couples didn't. So I would like that you do it as a homework just mm -hmm. after this class before the next love meeting. Mm -hmm. Bring some awareness into your love making. As you said just before, beautiful request, beautiful practice. Give each other tantric communication about what, how you like the love making for you to be. Mm -hmm. What means foreplay for you? How you like it? What you don't like? How you would like the act of love making to go through? What you feel the best? What you feel maybe the passion killers in it. How you would like to be held on in the afterplay. Mm. And to do it in the tantric love communication, let the woman first speak, give it time, and then the man speaks and the woman listens. If you know each other already, maybe you could start with the what you don't like it. You can do it as an aspect, but always finish with what you love about it, what it's already good, what it's good to cultivate mm -hmm. and keep it at the end always positive and uplifting. This doesn't just go for couples either. This can be for singles as well. I know a lot of people, you know, in the single, myself, when I was single, it's very rare to go to people and have these discussions. It was almost awkward. But um, a lot of people are starting to click on now and to be really conscious and to say, hey, this is what I want. This is what I need. And whether it's relationship, you're talking about relationships and what you want out of the relationship. Is it open? Is it poly, polyamorous? Is it monogamous? Whatever. But it's also talking about what you like before the actual ritual of lovemaking and what you like in it and what you like after. And just remember too that foreplay just doesn't need to be touch and, and things like that. It can, it, now you, you have all different bodies within you. It could be you need your emotions or emotional connection first or mental connection or you need it could be whatever you need, you need to be boisterous and say it. I think it is one of the most beautiful things. It's actually quite sexy when your partner can say, hey, I love this, keep going, or oh my God, or they tell you when they're really vocal in the bedroom, it is beautiful. This is your homework to do this because it is sexy, it is beautiful. When you have a partner that is confident and knows what they want and they're not afraid to say it, it makes it more pleasurable for you. It brings you to the next level and keep going and building. Let's talk about sex then. Very often we keep it as a taboo and we think, oh, it's too much upfront. But believe me, very often, especially the more conscious people, I would feel, wow, this person is straight. It's bringing it to the awareness. And mm -hmm. actually, you, by speaking out and being open about that, you encourage the other person, oh, I can be also open about that. And then mm -hmm. you can avoid miscommunications. And then you actually build up the trust and connection 
and you can um, express, for example, very important your limits, no limits about things, your wishes, and mm -hmm. maybe with some of the things you may match, maybe with some of not, but at least you will not cross each other boundaries by trying things what were not discussed, for example, yeah. uh, before. Yeah. And when you know clearly about your, for example, boundaries or your wishes, then actually you can go much deeper into the connection because then you don't guess, you don't have to hold back because of uh, you don't know something. Yeah. And you know, look, there's all different types of communication as well. It's like we were saying that eye gazing and your body's intuition and intelligence. And when you are conscious and aware, when you're bringing such awareness, into lovemaking, you can feel into your partner and you can feel into their energy and know what they like as well, as well as being vocal. There's so much communication going on. There's that entwining in lovemaking of bodies intelligences coming together. We do say, do this as a homework. People's needs are not met. There's so many, for instance, men addicted to porn, for instance, in a relationship. They would rather go to porn because they'll get their needs met without being vocal to their wife. Or wives or women or partners aren't vocal when their partner's not only stimulating the clitoris and not going for the G-spot or the other pleasurable points. This needs to be discussed. Needs are very, very important. Needs in the bedroom and bringing, let's say, radical honesty in a beautiful way. Because you never know with your partner. You may be dying to do, loving something, and you never communicate it, but they may secretly be loving it too. Imagine you both communicating and going, wow, you're just going to take it to the next level. So, homework, communication. Yes, and communication on all levels. Uh, also, like during the lovemaking, you mentioned it a little bit. I would like to emphasize body language. Look at the especially expression of your lover face. It can tell you so much how does she feel, how does she enjoy it, or maybe not. If she's contracting, mm. it means, okay, yeah, slow down. Be. If uh, someone is mourning, allow yourself to mourn when you feel good. Let the energy flow. It's the key of the energy flow, so mm. use this key. Also communicate in the very beautiful, loving way that, hey, you feel good. It feels, mmm, sense of pleasure. It can really flow into beautiful energy if it's understood. Oh yes, she like what I'm doing. Keep on doing it. I think as a society and, and the way maybe conditions and, and a lot of people do not use vocally, as we, we've trained for many years, a lot of people do hold back a little bit. Ooh. But allowing that sound to vibrate, giving the energy power, Try that in homework, to be more vocal, use more communication in lovemaking. We are a bit touching on one of the aspects of uh, sacred sexuality, what is uh, the liberation, liberation from the conditionings, what we didn't choose. One of it, shame of the sexuality and that something is wrong with lovemaking. Mm -hmm. And I always, since I began to teach, I tell people, hey, when you make sounds, don't worry about your neighbors. You will only encourage them mm. to be free as well. And you will create more of the flow of the real uh, beautiful lovemaking without a limitation. Everybody make love, all the couples. Don't feel that it's awkward to yeah. make sound, to enjoy it. And it doesn't have to sound like typical porn either. No. It can sound anything. If you're having a, a cervical orgasm, women, I mean, we can have snot and tears and be moaning and groaning and grinding and and allow your natural voice to come out allow your womb to be free and liberated allow her to have a voice that's very important yeah just being yeah. natural tantra is about uh, bringing ourselves back into the nature uh, liberating ourselves from the yeah. Cage, uh, limitations, what sometimes people are ashamed to be naked, even just with their relationship. Be proud of your body. It's mm -hmm. always your partner choose you for because it's love. Yeah. Your body, how you look, love your body, enjoy 
the beauty is coming from within, from this, uh, how you love your mm -hmm. body. There's so much conditions around sexuality. It sometimes it makes it hard to go into those beautiful parts. We do want you to be conscious, be aware that that is not actually your belief system. It's just being put onto you to be able to put that aside. If you're doing sacred magic, rituals, everything. You don't bring your, your baggage in. If things start to arise, put them to the side. You don't need to sweep it under the rug or anything, but put it aside and allow yourself to naturally to flow. And I, I think it's really important topic and point is the conditions around sexuality and to free ourselves and liberate ourselves. That is another part of sacred sexuality. Bringing it to the presence and the sacredness, it is a space for us to be here and now. The commitment to that presence, to guide ourselves into the life that will actually make us grow into that presence more and more. In general, the power of that and the sacredness of it, it's coming from commitment to that presence. If you could see, most of the spiritual practices, uh, meditations, uh, are about to be in presence. You are guided in the meditations to focus on something that will bring you to that presence. For example, focus on the breath, focus on observing some part of your body, Mm -hmm. or vipassana to go through all your body and being focused on the music, on the, some sensation, anything. It's mm -hmm. all about bringing yourself to the focus. And in Tantra, we are focused on the love, on the love making, on yeah. adoring our partner, worshipping the goddess. And because we love to do it, we feel pleasure about that. We feel very good joy from this. Mm -hmm. It's very easy for us to switch on to that presence, to be in that presence, because mm -hmm. we like to be in that presence. We don't want to lose any second of being in this joyful moment, in this beautiful love. So that's why it makes it powerful, but it also that's why it makes it sacred. To keep it sacred, it's to remember. In the moment, mm -hmm. when you start to think, because we are not the masters and so, it will happen to every master. In the moment when you start to think about some shopping or whatever, when you notice those faults, come back to the presence, mm -hmm. start to worship. And that's what we cultivate. That's what we are committing to. Yeah. That's the sacredness of the Tantra. It's not just typical sex where you do not commit. It's a spiritual discipline that you commit yourself to make it better and better mm -hmm. and to make your life also better. Then you don't overwhelm yourself with the news what you don't need. You don't overreact to the emotions what take you away from the presence, but you master yourself to be more present in the life, that you could be even more in love, more in sacredness, more in presence, to have better love making and more powerful love making to yourself, to the mm -hmm. partner. And that is one of the most spiritual practices what I can ever recommend and connect mm -hmm. with the sublimation method that was also required that presence. It's really empower your life full on and empower the relationship. Presence is getting out of the mind like you were saying, thinking about the shopping or the tasks and what to do and things like that. Uh, people find it, especially women, find it really hard to orgasm. Why? Because they're in their mind. A woman and men, when, when we're going into tantric lovemaking, we need to drop into the heart. And um, if only one can work, and I always say this, if the mind is switched on, the heart is turned off. If the mind is switched on and the heart is open, you know, it, it's only one can work. So we need to switch the mind off in lovemaking. And women, they find it hard to orgasm. Why? Because they're so in their mind. And if you drop into your heart, and I guess this comes down to lovemaking with the right partner as well, or making sure that you have a trust built up or you're building this energy up 
with your partner so you can open. The more you start to do this work or start to open your heart, the more deeper you're going to go in love making. So trust is a big thing in love making. Does that person have my back? Can I really let go and open without any fear, shame, guilt? Can I let go? Being in the conscious relationship and also like in this commitment to this mm -hmm. sacredness, presence, it's also like a constant path to rebuild the trust, to create more trust, more connection within our relationship. And what I want to make a clarification here, that with the mind switching off, you may fall about the monkey mind. To transform this monkey mind, what is jumping from fall to fall, mm -hmm. into the present mind. What is the healthy mind, what mm -hmm. is like here and now, what is observing, what is a part, what is co-creating this beautiful energy. Consciousness, yes, what is uh, yeah. here and now, mm -hmm. what is enjoying the beautiful connection. Here and now, in the love, in love, exactly, in adoration of the goddess. So we've got mm -hmm. the monkey mind yes. and then we've got the consciousness, or yes. the one that yes. overlooks yes. everything. We mm -hmm. want to connect mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. that part of, mm -hmm. of ourselves, mm -hmm. but we want to drop into this, mm -hmm. into our soul, into mm -hmm. our heart into opening and softening. When uh, the mind is here and now, it connects to the spirit and to the heart. Yeah, and in that moment, it. it's the union within yourself yeah. and what creates this beautiful connection yeah. also to the partner, not only on the sexual level or on the mind level, but on all levels. And that's what also brings the sacredness and this union on all levels, what we mentioned before as well. So we go into sublimation. Bringing the energy up instead of losing it. Sublimation is one of the most essential aspects in Tantra, in our teachings. We go deeper into it in our online and in-person courses. Today we will just shortly explain you how you do it and how this simple method guide you into one of the most powerful spiritual and loving act what human people can do. In typical sex, we lose energy through the ejaculation or through the clitoral orgasm. This method, it comes also for the woman. Instead of losing it, Tantra is about bringing this energy up to nourish other chakras. Especially at the beginning, we bring it to the heart that we are more loving, more connected within ourselves, with our partner. Mm. And that this love, it empowers us. So I will show you how you avoid the peak orgasm. So just before so-called point of no return, you do it, use it, don't lose it method. Well, it is very similar tantric version of microcosmic orbit so what, what is used in sexual dance. So what Mihal means, the point of no return means just before the man is about to ejaculate and just before the woman is about to have a clitorious orgasm. Just before. So probably about 70% of the height of that stimulation when you're first trying out, that's what he means, is to stop. Exactly, thank you. Yeah. You use uh, three methods, the PC muscle, breath, and visualization. The three methods are connected to each other. PC muscle is the muscle what you use to stop urinating. So you can pause the video and go to the toilet and force yourself a few times to stop peeing and recognize which muscles are you using at that moment. When you know for sure which muscles are you using, you start to squeeze and train these muscles. Mm -hmm. As uh, more trained they are, then it's easier for you to use it in the method, yes? When you squeeze the PC muscle, you shut the energy up. When you breathe in, you suck the energy up. So that's why you use the breath. And then you use the visualization 
to support you. Mm -hmm. They say that the energy follows your attention. That's why you visualize. I will explain all the method. It's all connected. So with the breathing, with the tightening your PC muscle, you imagine that the energy goes from your genitals on the back of your spine and you bring it to the heart and then with the breath out you relax the PC muscle and you imagine that the energy goes down. So one more time again, with the breath in, tight your PC muscle, visualize that the energy goes up, with the breath out, relax your PC muscle, imagine that energy goes back to the genitals. Mm -hmm. And you make five or maybe seven of those circles, depends how you feel. It depends on how much sexual energy so remember when we're love making, we're building that energy in the sexual, our genitals. And there is so much energy there, that's why it needs to explode. That's why a clitoris and ejaculation is an explosive energy because the body needs to release it fast. So it is bringing the energy up, bringing it up to the heart, and then once it, you open the energy channel of the heart on the exhalation on that same ah. breath breathing it down visualizing it going back down rooting back into the genitals it's really important because this part here is where bringing that energy up to the heart of the higher chakras if it's too much in the sexual energy then it'll stay in there, we'll lose it. If we bring it up to the heart, where then we're starting to nourish these other higher chakras, higher parts of ourselves and nourish it. And, and like Michal said, or, or using the orbital circulation, bringing that through and circulating the energy through the whole body. Thankful this circulation, we brought this too much energy what was ready to explode and get lost. We brought it to the heart. Our love making it's more connected, more loving ourselves, more loving the partner, more connecting to the partner. And what most important, it makes us far away from the point of no return, so we can continue with love making. What we're doing is we're bringing equilibrium then into the heart and sex, bringing balance into our humanness and divinity. But if one's too much, if we're too much in our heart, then our sexual energy, that fire will sort of go out. If we're too much in our, in our sex, then really stay stuck in the lower humanist desires, run on, on animal instinct, which is not a bad thing, but we want to um, be able to bring totality into our sacred sexuality. So that's why I'm saying uh, you have to be in the presence and you have to feel, you have to see, get to know yourself. And sometimes you may need five of those uh, circulations, sometimes maybe seven of those circulations. If you do too much, you will bring too much energy from the sex to the heart and then the sexual energy will get down too much and that your generating power will the, the be, be, be a yeah. bit too much down. Yeah. So you have to figure out not to do it too much. But you will figure out. Every time when you reach again point of no return, you do this. And in that way, you go every time with the waves higher and higher uh, on the ecstasy level because you don't lose it. Create more and more energy. You get more energized. And uh, in that way, also, you can make love for hours. We transform the minutes into the hours of love making, and you do not lose the energy at the end. Tantra is not about the losing energy. You cultivating, you train yourself uh, into mastering it. Uh, that you basically avoid this and you are able to never lose that energy. Basically, not to ejaculate, it will happen, uh, especially at the beginning, but in general, you will master yourself to not to be attached to this. Mm -hmm. And in that way, you are able to make love for hours and after love making, you are not tired, you not go to sleep like in typical sex, but 
you feel energized, you feel inspired, you feel uh, all your chakras are in uh, the great power. Uh, you are able to write beautiful poems, make beautiful paintings, uh, you are inspired to create, creative. you know, like uh, you transform energy. this energy yeah. into, you basically, you are ready to burn, burn the baby, uh, what is not physical, but bring this energy into your project, uh, to nourish yeah. the project. So we know sexual genitals are the generators. They're, that is the battery, the generators of this channel. We need to keep this alive and this is what this orbital energy is about. Let's have a look. I'm going to talk about females. You're wondering probably why, what the hell? Most women that I teach when I say about not having a clitorious orgasm and they're like, what the hell? And this is for women that do clitorious orgasm. If women that cannot, we say go for it, try to have a clitorious orgasm. But those women that do have clitorious orgasms, saying that your clitoris is the generator. It is the button that should be the warm up button. It is, it gets it active and builds up that energy. The only time you need to sublimate is just before you have a clitoris orgasms. All other orgasms are a-okay. You do not need to sublimate your G-spot, your A-spot, your cervix, because you'll keep going and going. They are the orgasmic spots that never explode. A clitoris orgasm will always explode. You may be lucky to have two orgasms from a clitoris, but once you lose that energy, it's gone. You wanna to go to sleep just like the men. You actually disconnect. You miss out on that actual potent intimacy and love making after, or that very sacred connection. What I'm talking about for women is if you bring the energy up about 70% just before you're about to orgasm to bring that up to the heart and bring that down. That is just one sublimation as well. There are many other forms. There's the Egyptian sublimation where we bring it up to the heart and then we anchor it around and anchor it around and bring it back down. There's all different techniques, but we'll bring just the simple one today for you to practice. We talk about this on our retreats our online courses and go deeper into all other different techniques. But women, when you do sublimate this energy from the clitorious orgasm, you are then able, you are so turned on, you are so juicy, wet, open and ready that your yoni and your womb is ready for more. So that means that you can then go into the areas of your G-spot, exploring that, exploring all different avenues or that orgasmic spot. The clitoris is the turn on button. And trust me, go for those other spots and explore yourself or get your partner to explore because these spots they are the powerhouses, trust me. If you want to be a sex goddess, go for it. Press the turn on button for the clitoris, sublimate and go for this and explore your yoni and explore those, those beautiful um, juicy spots. To make you more curious and encouraged, I would say yes, become also the sex god uh, and uh, mm. the man uh, can experience at least eight other types of uh, orgasms uh, and the woman at least 11 types of orgasms and uh, only the clitoral and uh, ejaculatory orgasms are the explosive when you lose the energy. All the other orgasms mm. are very much empowering and they are like waves that it goes up and up and up. You build up on the energy and you basically never lose. It just becomes better and better. The ecstasy becomes better and better. So all those other orgasms you may achieve by 
bringing yourself to the higher and higher ecstasy by using don't losing energy so the using don't losing method yes you uh, bring yourself up and we use the clitoral stimulation the typical uh, sexual stimulation to bring us to this higher states of ecstasy that we can reach uh, this uh, activation of other points and we can feel this other higher types of words. We guide you with mm. all of this to our courses. We're happy to guide you uh, into this. That's what all Tantra a lot is about. But I would like to explain you uh, in this lecture here, in this masterclass, that how this makes uh, it sacred. Freedom from desires. That's what it's all spirituality about. Liberation. A very important aspect in Tantra. In typical sex, man or woman is cut off from the best experience without them having any control. Most of the people, if you ask them if they would like to prolong the moment of the orgasm, yes, I would love to. I can imagine if I tell to the people, I was also there, if I tell especially to the man, that's what I can relate to, if someone would tell me, hey, you have to avoid the ejaculation, I would think, tick, 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 tick. I have to avoid the few best seconds of my life? Are you crazy? No, no, I'm not going for it. But mm -hmm. through the experience, believe me, the people who liberated themselves, we guide you how, it's a process mm -hmm. from the clitoral orgasm or ejaculation orgasm, they're not interested about it anymore. You know, it's like, well, if someone is asking me, like, what for? Game over? I don't need game over. Mm -hmm. I don't need to lose energy if I can have higher ecstasy and feel afterwards energized, more healthy, more powerful. Mm -hmm. And how you, like, basically, in the typical sex, actually, that's how we get attached. That's how we get addicted. Mm -hmm. In the same moment, uh, when the man or the woman have uh, explosive orgasm, the body shoots the hormone, what the person who is addicted from uh, heroin uh, gets during the shot. When you ask them what is the most addictive, uh, they would say, yes, during the shot moment, this is the most addictive for the person who is addicted from the heroin. That's explain how addictive is the ejaculation. The same hormone, it's the same mechanism in the body. So yes, I completely understand. But through the experience, you can guide yourself that, hey, uh, you can be stronger than this and you can have much higher experiences than this. Also, when you are able to make love for hours, it's usually you don't stop because you lose the energy. You are not cut off in the moment when you would like to actually continue so you are not wanting more and more. You are satisfied. I always tell the simple example, a bit of story with the chocolate. So imagine that I got one chocolate and we sit by the table. And maybe I have lecture, we have heart sharing, maybe birthday, whatever event. I share this chocolate. Everybody get the piece. It's delicious, raw, fair trade, organic chocolate. It's like the best chocolate you ever ate. It's melting into your mouth. Mm. There is the last piece left. Everybody thinks, mm, shall I get it, shall I not? I would not be polite if I get the last piece or whatever. You cannot be focused anymore because you're desiring this delicious chocolate because it was so good. But imagine another situation. I got the full box from my mom of this chocolate for my birthday and I see it expiry date is uh, soon so I rather share it I love to share it instead of letting it to be wasted so I give every of us three tablets of this chocolate each of us is like mm, it's the same delicious chocolate the same one it's like melting into your mouth everyone eats mm, ah. and you eat half you satisfied you enjoy it but you feel like oh it's enough you put the two and a half tablet in your room and you forget for one week. And that's the freedom what make you free from the desires. You satisfy, you got enough. So through the love making for hours, you satisfy. 
and in that way you are free from desires. You make love because it's your choice, because you know it's the best way of sharing love to another partner. It's not addiction, it's not the need, it's not the desires, it's a free choice. When we look at it too, when we are having these explosive orgasms, and I'm talking as a woman because I am a woman, and when we are, we're just fixated about the end result, this the orgasm, got to get to it, got to get to it, got to get to it. And I was like that. It's got to get to it, got to get to it. And, and it's almost like the heroin addict trying to get the drug. It's the dopamine and, and all those hormones rushing through going, I've, I've got to get that hit. And what happens is in that, scenario is you go more into selfish love making because you're so fixated on that you're more connected into uh, 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 uh. and you never really experience uniting with your your partner and experiencing the energy going through and the the beautiful bliss of it all you, you're you're more fixated on the lower energies and um, what we're talking about is is not um, stopping your pleasures or stopping you from ejaculating or stopping you from having the best three seconds of your life, as Michal always says. It's, it's about being able to have the best experience of your life, in your life, and to be able to use these other orgasmic spots. I'm gonna say, a nipple orgasm is exactly like a clitorious orgasm. It's exactly like a clitorious orgasm. But the beautiful thing is, a nipple orgasm, you'll always, it'll, you'll never explode. It, I'm gonna say, I could go for hours and hours. And I'm gonna say, if you are so fixated on your clitorious orgasm, go for other orgasms, go for the nipple, go for the G-spot, you know. And the man can have it too. And the men Don't can forget have it about too. It. Yeah, the men can have it too. You know, there, there are parts when you really go into tantric love make and you really are caught. Now, for me, I'm able to bring, instead of having the clitoris orgasm, is to be able to bring that orgasm now into different parts of my body at will because I have trained myself to be able to use that sublimation technique, but also with intention to be able to bring the energy elsewhere. And that's also with the men as well, as well as females. We say try this, we, we, where it'll change your life in lovemaking, in sacred sexuality, in not only within your own bodies, but you'll start to see it and being more conscious with your world and the people around you. As Michal says, your family, your loved ones, your children, the people and how you connect with people. It brings more awareness and more love and gets you out of the, the monkey mind and the, um, your animal nest and allows you to see the bigger picture, the consciousness of who you are and what you're about. And that's about love. Everything is about loving better and doing it in Tantra, in mm -hmm. our teachings. And that's one of the most powerful ways to achieve this, the sacredness of the sexuality. Mm -hmm. And yes, achieve this uh, higher orgasm, like full body orgasms, mm -hmm. any type like of it, orgasm like and so on. And uh, one of the, uh, another aspect what I wanted to talk about, the sacredness of what is brought by this use it, don't lose it method. It's transforming this beautiful slogan, what many teachings, what many religions are sharing, that we are all one, bringing it into real experience. Through Tantra, through using, don't losing method, we can bring it from the belief into the real experience. Mm. And when we experience it through the so-called cosmic orgasm or universal orgasm, when you experience this oneness, this state of Samadhi, Nirvana or Satori, how is it called in other teachings, this oneness 
within yourself, not only actually within yourself, that you can feel all your organs, that you can feel every cell of your body as a whole being. You can feel all your aspects, heart, consciousness, your body, everything you feel fully present, fully connected within yourself. But not only this, this expand into feeling oneness with your partner, that you can actually feel her feeling, her love, her connection, her breath, basically her ecstasy is actually your ecstasy. You can feel when she's reaching point of no return, so you can slow down and you can really feel her love. You are one within this union. It's a beautiful sacred union. So this empowers your relationship so much. But it goes even further. You experience this Satori moment that there is no separation anymore, that there is no division, that we are all one. You are feeling one with the nature, with the universe, with the stars. You can feel how the Mother Earth is breathing and you, you are completely part of the one. When you experience this, this empowers all your life because you don't only believe that we are all one. What is beautiful belief? Mm. But if you know something, you can stand for it. It would be very silly if I wouldn't like to hurt you if I know that we are all one. I would rather see you happy and to make you happy. That's what also empowers <laughs> me, us, to share love, to use the best of my life to make everybody happy with the most essential way. That's why we share all the Tantra, all our teachings, because we want you to experience the same what we did. Your happiness is our happiness. Beautiful. Yeah, look, with my first uh, experience of Tantra, um, for me, was love making, and I had my first cosmic orgasm and with a cosmic orgasm that is exactly what it is and when you are aware and conscious and you have everything that we have already talked about and explained and you have that sacred space already set up and you are able to sublimate these energies from the humanness that we are, which is beautiful, but we are also light beings. We are also angels, if you want to say, or angelic beings as well. And as we bring our humanness up to our heart or the portal to our divinity, and we're bringing this energy up to the higher chakras, and as we're also connecting in and being conscious and aware of yourself and expanding and opening and also being conscious of the person that you're making love to as well and melting in to each other. There can be a moment of that cosmic orgasm and you can really shoot out of your body and have these moments where a cosmic orgasm is where you leave your body, you leave your physical body, but your senses are still intact and you're still connected to your light body and you are connected out and you go and you are actually elongated where your, your humanness, your portal of your heart, your cosmic centers and you shooting up with your love beloved in that, that sacred union and your amongst completely go into the oneness of the universal heartbeat, that cosmic heartbeat. You are exploding into the stars and this is what sacred sexuality is. This is what it is. And it's not just typical porn, let's get off, let's just chase that carrot. Let's, let's, it is about going into these portals. Trust me, you, you have these superhuman powers. And especially in lovemaking. It is, it's amazing.
absolutely amazing. So sacred sexuality is consciousness, awareness. It is, is sublimation. It's bringing these potent vital life force, bringing this up into the higher chakras. Sacred sexuality is communication. It is about before the, the act of the alchemy. It is the foreplay, the ritual, the lovemaking, and the aftercare. There, there is so much in, in sacred sexuality. We could talk for days on it, but we want you to go into, we've just covered the basics. So we, we would love for you to practice from now on. Try the sublimation. Even see and be conscious and aware of when you actually do have an explosive orgasm. How do you feel after? Do you feel invigorated? I know you, you will feel relaxed. But notice if it's relaxed or if you're actually tired. Have you drained your energy? And then see the difference when you actually do sublimate and notice your energy shift. Notice and be aware of this. And it's all about exploration. So we would love for you to explore. There are many, many aspects and uh, pitfalls and the key method that you can use. You just touch the techniques and uh, guide you to all the process uh, and so on and so on. Uh, Tantra is like all never-ending story of exploring the love and make, basically learning how to love uh, better and doing it, how to uh, make love in deeper ways. This is uh, all about. We guide you, we wish that we encourage you into this and I would uh, love uh, to uh, also express another aspect of sacred sexuality. Another beautiful way of expressing the sacred sexuality and feeling it, uh, this is what you can repeat many times and I'm sure if you are fully in love, in nice connection with your partner and you master it, that uh, use it, don't lose it method, uh, you can experience it as I am blessed to experience. Every time when we make love and I see the beautiful gratitude, beautiful love, beautiful happiness in my beloved one and I know that I influence that happiness, mm. this is the best heaven on earth what I can experience in my life, what I experience in my life. And I'm so happy and we enjoy both, you know, like it's like amazing. This is the best essence of life. This is like I would not exchange this, it for anything else. This is what we're talking mm -hmm. about, chasing the, the, the carrot, like going for the addiction or the explosive orgasm. We disconnect, we start to be selfish lovers. When we go into like Mihal was saying, it, it's my bliss is your bliss. Exactly. And we go into this oneness, mm -hmm. into love making. With Tantra, you basically develop because you nourish the heart, you nourish also the other chakras in other ways of sublimating, like you bring it to other chakras, you bring it to other centers, aspects of your life and so. And it's natural that people who are connected with Tantra, they not only develop their conscious relationship, it's flourishing. It's not only they love, they're more confident to themselves, and more powerful as a being, more feeling young, energized, and passionate about the things what they do. Also, this connection and love expands naturally. It's naturally that in this uh, tantric circles, people naturally become conscious about animal rights. They switch into the vegan diet, or they more uh, environmental aware. Uh, they start to take care for the nature for their neighborhood. They start to do some social help to they, the others, or they are more aware about the old lady who needs maybe some help, or the cat who is hungry, or the dog. They realize mm -hmm. that when you go on the tantric path and really go into it, and, and you're using this, and, mm -hmm. and it is your life, you start to become very spiritually connected with yourself and spirituality is just not something that you wear anymore or it's a hippie movement or whatever it is and oh love and light and loving everything 
No, you, you actually first start to love this and then it radiates outward. And this is what Tantra is. And I will put this down. Michal has been a beautiful partner and I have explored so much within myself as a, as a brat as well. God love him that he is so patient. But it is, it's about self-love. It, it comes from self-love and when you're really aware of your own shadows and your own shit and baggage and you start to heal yourself, it replenishes and radiates out to your loved ones and you can be there more consciously, more aware, hold people more, understand people more, be more patient. You understand them because you understand yourself. Also, by recognizing and cultivating the essence of your love, yourself, you loving yourself from the basic, basically using your sexuality, your body, and cultivating it together with conscious, willing partner, you empower it. You use this, you use it, don't lose it, the method, you empower. One plus one in Tantra is multiply, it's like four, it's not only two, it's like power of like, wow, it expands this love further, this connection, it expands further. It's like uh, when after the workshop, I feel the participants happiness and see them liberated and full of love to each other as a partners really sparkling with the energy your happiness their happiness is my happiness mm -hmm. and uh, not the same like one to one what is the most powerful but it's also it reflects a bit like oh, essence of heart. life their happiness is my happiness and yeah. it really feels like me encouraged that actually I'm doing well on sharing the love to the others in the sacred way. Encourage them to find, empower their love, bringing them and happiness. Sharing this experience, what I blessed with me, with my partner. Give the example to you, please. If you feel encouraged by this path and you have some experiences, share it to the others. Let it flow because that's what I feel. It's a solution for the world what we are living. More connection, more love, more essence, more real spirituality, sacredness, sacred sexuality. What I feel Tantra has brought to me is, and Mihal always says, love is everything and you always talk about love but tantra has brought to me giving love is, is one of the most important we're only here for a short time in life and to hold back from yourself hold back in sharing with your loved ones that you really love to share that love with them to share what's inside that that beauty and this is what Tantra is all about, is to shake off the shit, the shadows, the conditions, the everything, and to shine and to share that, to share it with your loved ones, to, like Michal said, your bliss is my bliss, is to give. Love is there to give. Not just to anybody that's just gonna take it and run and, and, and suck your living life force like a, like a parasite but your loved ones, to nourish that, to love, to love, to, to bring the energy up. Exactly. And from the contrary, I would like to share another example. As this lovemaking and bringing your happiness, it's the best heaven on earth as I could experience. Hurting someone, seeing the disappointment, the pain, the sadness, and knowing that I influence that, is the biggest hell I experienced in my life. Yeah. And it's the hardest lesson. I glad that I could learn from it, but I learned it's a hard lesson. I would never do that again. It shows me you don't do bad things to, especially the people who you love. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to do the same mistake. It's hard to learn from your own mistake, so please learn from mine. That's what we also guide you to not to go. This is also this contrast that you can create. Heaven when you are connected, you can create the heaven on earth, but you can also create the hell on earth to yourself, to beloved one, and that you don't want that. 
and this connection make you making good choices yeah. good choices and that makes use it don't lose it guide you into the one of the most powerful in my opinion spirituality there is a beautiful teacher god bless and rest her soul auntie mahalini a hawaiian auntie told me don't check into hell hotel don't do it you know there's too much heaven on earth and and heaven comes from our heart and being conscious being conscious of what we give out what we're only here for a short amount of time and it's all about um, giving being aware as we give we also we know we receive and also loving this too don't forget yourself and that's what tantra is if you look deep into yourself what the life is about to love yourself love the beloved ones and we teach you how to do it better and better how to use the powerful sacred sexuality to make it even more powerful we experience it by ourselves and we are willingly to share it with you because we all want to be happy and we want you to be happy then we are more happy let it flow we're going into a new part a new world now of the shit that's going on at the moment and control and and the patriarchal and governments are falling they're all crumbling down and all us awakened people or people that are starting to just start to awaken this is what this is all about is to bring that heart bring that awareness bring that love start sharing start working on this start start working on this and reaching out to your loved ones reaching out to people in need there are so many people out there that are suffering at the moment it's about sharing our heart and raising the consciousness collective consciousness and this is what we're about and we want to keep sharing this and our love and our knowledge and our wisdom Let's share see. it further stay connected on the tantra movement on the light of lemuria on Tantra for Couples, we guide you into a deeper path, share that love with us, go into the deeper experience. Blessings. Thank you for watching and being there with us. Use it, don't lose it. Aho. Aho.